Greetings and salutations, greetings and salutations, greetings and salutations in our robot of an reggae style. Yes, it's Fabian Say so we're back. And our focus this time is reggae month and black history month. Because I'm talking about a gentleman who I have such admiration for, Bob Marley. So we are in the throes of Reggae Month in Jamaica. You know, the February 2nd was Dennis Brown's birthday. Um, February 6th, last week, Saturday, was Bob's birthday. It's Bob Marley, um, Derek Harriot, Bunny Rocks from Third World, and a man named Errol Dunkley all had a birthday on the 6th. We are celebrating, I am celebrating Bob Marley. I'm a Bob Marley geek, let me tell you. Props and respect for Bob, and I love the story of Bob Marley, the journey. So this is five lessons from Bob Marley. And what I've done is I use some of the songs of his as markers for these topics or, or, or focus that, that I think is relevant. So the first one is Cornerstone. So there's a line in Cornerstone that says, the stone that the builder refused shall become the head cornerstone. And I also tie with that the Jamaican proverb, what is few cannot be unfeel which means that once something is destined to be yours, no matter what happens, no matter what appears. And so Bob was heavy into using the Bible and biblical phrases. So Bob was authored early in his life. He was a little red skin youth. He was a mulatto boy. Um, people used to tease him, cajole him. He used to get extra chores. You know, his cousins would give him extra chores. So Bob knew what it felt like to be the outsider. You know, then you have a black mother, with a much older white man as your father who disappears from your life, this kind of stands out in a rural community and way back, you know, in the 60s. There's a story that says Bob, when he got old enough, traveled to meet the Marleys to introduce himself, to kind of get ahead, you know, a little help with launching his career. And as we say in Jamaica, them running, they did not want to have anything to do with him. They dismissed him. They said, oh, yeah, we know about you, but we don't want to have anything to do with you. And this is when he's reputed that he said, the stone that we're refusing as a builder will become the head corner stone. And he pressed on. And saints, saints, who is the most popular Marley in the world? <laughs> so ironically, the family around him didn't want anything to do with him. And who put the name Marley on the map but the same youth with him run? Head corner stone. What is for you cannot be unfeel. Next one for me is Fixity of Purpose. And the song I'm choosing for that is Ride Natty Ride. Ride Natty Ride. Go there, dready, go there. Don't lose your focus. Bob went through a lot. Bob wasn't always a favorite. Bob wasn't always popular. In Jamaica, there's a saying called Burnout. Lots of people burn out Bob or did not support him or People didn't think he was talented. They didn't think he could sing. Some people, and even now, said, boys, because he was light-skinned, why, why he got as a, a far ahead as he could. The Whalers were on tour. Chris Blackwell was working with them and promoting them. And they didn't like touring. They didn't like traveling. Bob was the one who was apparently most open to what this meant to advance the brand and the career. Um, Peter Tosh, who legend has it, was the least user-friendly did not like Chris Blackwell. This is legendary. He actually called Chris Blackwell, Chris Whitewell. Um, so they were always kind of at loggerheads. Bonnie was a little friendlier, but Bonnie was the most orthodox in terms of Rastafari. So Bonnie in particular had some issues with some of the clubs that Blackwell arranged for them to perform at. There were a lot of white folks, of course, some people who were on drugs, people from the lesbian and gay and transgender community. And Bonnie was like, what kind of places is this? You have Mick Rastaman performing now. So there was this tension. So Bonnie left the group first. Apparently Blackwell said, it's my way or the highway. I know what I'm doing. So Bonnie left. And in an interview, he had said, boy, he had hoped that Peter and, and Bob would come with him. But they didn't. And then Peter left shortly after. But Bob stayed. Now, mind you, Bonnie and Peter are Bob brethren. They're coming from Trenchtown days. And Bonnie and Bob are actually cousins. So he knew him from before. But Bob knew that their journey was not the same as his. So he stayed. So after they left the Natty Dread tour, the Natty Dread album is the first album that has just Bob alone on the cover, sporting the young Ras, 
the I3 joined the band to get that vocal, because one of the things that the Whalers were known for was this wonderful falsetto vocal styling they had. So the, the I3 and then Tyrone Downey and Al Anderson joined the band because Carlton and um, Carlton and Aston, the Barrett brothers were there. And this was the launch of Bob Marley and the Whalers. So again, your brethren never gone, but you know what your journey is going to be and it's meant to be. And the rest is history. You know, Peter and Buddy went on to have careers as well. And Bob did his thing. I am Lion Zion. I'm going to be iron like a lion in Zion. And I use this to talk about discipline. Bob did not play. <laughs> the name Gong, Tough Gong. So Gong was a nickname they had for him. Bob was a disciplinarian. He treated his music like something sacred. He was like a drill master. Rehearsals, you're going to rehearse till you get it right. People get left at airport with them late for tours. He understood the importance of his craft and getting it right. One of the things that Chris Blackwell says is that, you know, when Bob gave him the masters of the first, that first album, Catch a Fire, it was world-class level. It wasn't, oh, well, beg you, blind. The quality of the music and the recording was top-notch. Bob pushed for that. He understood what it meant to have the discipline to match your talent to become a world player. Lesson number three, I call this one not just quantity, but quality. And I call I use soul rebel for this. I'm a rebel, soul rebel. Bob Marley died at 36. 36 people. <laughs> okay? The Whalers toured every single year from 1973 until Bob's death. Sometimes twice. They put out an album every year. Sometimes a, record, a studio album and a live album. This level of, of work and artistry is insane. Plus, a tour for every album. It's crazy. So then at 36, the body of work Bob Marley left. Plus, add to that, people, there are sometimes three or four versions of some songs because Bob was constantly revisiting. So for some songs like One, One Love, there's a ska version. So some there's a ska version, a rock steady version, a reggae version or an acoustic version, redemption song, there's at least three versions. The most popular one that we know is probably the last one done where seasoned artists singing acoustically, but it was and, but the quality. So it wasn't just, let me just dash out, as you say in Jamaica, a whole heap of things, but the quality was pristine. And he would write lyrics on paper and go over them and revisit the songs. So not just quantity, but quality. Lesson number four, I call origins don't determine your destiny. And maybe you know I've lost count. This is actually lesson number five. What am I talking about? And for this one, I use Dopey Conqueror. I'm a Dopey Conqueror. And in Jamaica, that expression means that you know, you're not even afraid of ghosts. Even ghosts, you conquer them. And you know, things that frighten other people don't frighten you. While living in the States, it is reputed that Bob had a dream. And in the dream, he says, Hail Selassie gave him a ring. Now, quick thing. Bob was seen as being clairvoyant from when he was a kid. He was reading people's palms and interpreting dreams from when he was young. And then his grandfather, Omariah, was like a wise, old sage, village lawyer, respected elder in the community in Nine Miles. So Bob has this in his history, this kind of wisdom. He interpreted this to mean he was meant to be a messenger for Rastafari, not just a musician, that his larger purpose was to spread the message of Rastafari. And, you know, for those of you who don't know, Rastafari is a combination of the teachings of Marcus Garvey with some elements of Christianity and Proverbs and, and African beliefs and Jamaican Proverbs as well. And it's the only contemporary religion in the world that started in Jamaica. So he was clear about this. Fast forward, years later, Bob meets Hale Selassie's son. And, and Hale Selassie's son gives Bob what is said to be the ring that he saw in his dream. So knowing where I start from does not determine where I end up. Bob Marley, the 
the little red skin youth from St. Anne from Jamaica, this dot on the map went on to conquer the world with his music, with the message, with the focus. People became fascinated with Rastafari, Jamaica, the language. The, the revolution in Rhodesia when they're fighting for the independence, their anthems were Bob Marley songs to the point that when they got their independence, the government invited Bob to perform. They couldn't afford, and Bob said, I will pay. He paid his own way and his band's way to perform in Zimbabwe because you know, they had a song. Africa na liberate Zimbabwe. Again, he recorded that while the, 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 res, the revolution was going on. So being in tune and plugged into what's going on in the world, he knew I may be a little youth from St. Anne, but I'm an international artist. I am a mega storyteller. And so he didn't just tell stories of Jamaica. He spoke to the human condition, the condition of black people all over the world. He broadened his brand and his focus. He was always reading. There's a joke that says somebody came in and he was reading like a Rolling Stone magazine, which he was on the cover of in 1976. Um, and somebody said, oh, you're reading a magazine about Rockstar. I think the Rolling Stone was on the cover. And he said, they're the top in the business now. They're number one in the world. I want to see and learn what they're doing. I always refer to Bob as a sponge. He learned from every producer, um, manager he worked with. He asked questions, he paid attention, and he applied it to his journey and has left an indelible mark on the world, having died at 36. Amazing. So for me, the five lessons from Bob Marley are what is for you cannot be on for you, which I think is captured in the song Cornerstone. Fix it to your purpose. Ride Natty Ride. Don't lose focus. Stay up on your track. Then discipline, which is Iron Lion Zion for me. Then not just quantity, but quality, soul rebel, and origins do not determine your destiny. Doppy Conqueror. Bob, bless up yourself. And again, you know, sometimes people get a little antsy and a little shady. No, Bob wasn't the only reggae artist. There's a slew of reggae artists, you know. Toots um, Hibbert, who left us recently, is the one who named reggae. There was a whole set of people working on reggae. And he stands on the shoulders also of the musicians and producers that he worked with and managers and people who bore the vision. I also love to call the name of Neville Garrick, who for the artistry, album covers and even what people experience at the Bob Marley experiences because they weren't just shows. A whole set of people tied into this one little man who knew why he was here, who knew his purpose and who knew the purpose was bigger than him. It wasn't about being a rock star or a superstar. It was a being about a messenger for Ja Rastafari, for Jamaica, for black people, using this genre of reggae music. Bob Robert Nesta Mali. Big up yourself, enough respect every time. As you know my people, comment, like, subscribe, share, all these good things. Stay tuned, we're gonna be back in your life very, very soon. Enjoy the rest of your Black History Month. Enjoy the rest of Reggae Month. Um, do I remember what I'm talking about next? Yes! I'm going to be talking about some young artists in the business of reggae and in the reggae, what they call the reggae revival, who excite me and make me feel good to be a Jamaican, but also I love the music that they're sharing. Big up yourself, enough respect, peace, take care.